How you doing Year 10s and welcome to another video. These videos are on Unit 2, what are the bonding models. Make sure you've got a pen, highlighter, highlight all the highlights, copy down all the annotations, make sure that you've logged on to Educanon and answer all the questions. Now let's get into the videos. Unit 2, what are the bonding models? 2.1, what are ions? We look at what are ions in this video. The understanding and outcomes, we need to define the term valence electrons. We want to know how many valence electrons are in the elements. We want to identify the types of cations or anions, and we want to state the type of bond formed between anions and cations. The text reference is below. Now the periodic table, we've done a fair bit of work on this, and one of the things we can get from the periodic table is the number of electrons in the outer shell. The group number helps us to define what we call the valence electrons, which are the number of electrons in the outermost shell of an atom. So for instance, group one, the alkali metals, have one electron in their outer shell. They all have one electron. Group two elements have two electrons in their outer shell. We jump all the way across to group 13, which has three, Carbon's group has four, five, six, seven, and the Nobel gases have eight electrons in their outer shell. The transition elements, well, they can be a little bit funny from time to time, so we don't apply the same rule. Some of them you have to remember, and some of them will be given to you as information. But the main group ones, groups one, two, 13, 14, to 18, you need to know. If we have a look at oxygen, oxygen is in group 16. That means it will have six valence electrons, six electrons in its outer shell. Rubidium, rubidium is in group one, the alkali metals. It has one valence electron, one electron in its outer shell. We can use that information to, to work out how the ions will behave. They will either lose an electron or they will gain an electron. Elect um, atoms that lose an electron are called cations. Atoms that gain electrons are called anions. We need to work out the charge on what we call monoatomic ions, which are one atom using the periodic table. So chlorine, chlorine is in group 17. It has seven electrons in its outer shell. So it has seven valence electrons. Now it would be very hard for chlorine to lose seven electrons. So what it wants to do is to make a full or stable outer shell. It wants to gain one electron. It wants to have eight electrons in its outer shell. So it will gain one electron to become negatively charged. Gaining an electron means you become negative. In the process of gaining one electron, it will now have eight electrons in its outer shell and it's going to become negatively charged. We call something that has become negatively charged an anion. So the non-metals form anions. Its symbol will be Cl, and then we have the charge in the top right-hand corner. So Cl minus, and that's the same as Cl minus one. Because it's a non-metal, its name will slightly change. We change the last part of the name to ide. So it would be called chlor, Ide, chloride. The ions, we change the last name of the non-metals only. Calcium, well calcium is in group two, the alkali earth metals, which means it has two valence electrons. Now it would be really hard for calcium to gain six electrons and have a full outer shell, so what it will want to do is it will want to lose two electrons, and then its inner shell will be full. So it wants to lose two electrons, which means it will become positively charged. Losing electrons becomes positively charged. So it will have the formula Ca2+. Because it is a metal, the name of its ion doesn't change. It's just a calcium ion. Phosphorus, number 15 on the periodic table. Phosphorus is over in group 15, which means that it has five electrons in its outer shell five valence electrons. So 
Phosphorus could do two things. It could either lose five electrons or it could gain three electrons. What's the easiest, easiest of those to do? Well, it's easier to gain three than it is to lose five. So phosphorus, a non-metal, gains three electrons, so it becomes an anion. Gaining three electrons means it has a three minus charge, and its name, because it's a non-metal, will change. It will be called phosphide. Okay, changing the last part of the name to ide. Phosphide. To explain why an ion is stable, we need to look at the electron configuration of the ion. And an ion is stable when it has a full outer shell of electrons. Now a full outer shell means an octet, and an octet means eight. So the ions are stable when they have eight electrons in its outer shell. Remember that metals want to lose electrons to have a full outer shell, and non-metals want to gain electrons to have a full outer shell. So let's have a look at magnesium, and I know I wrote that down wrong, but non-metals gain electrons. Let's have a look at magnesium. Magnesium has an atomic number of 12, which means it has 12 protons in the nucleus and 12 electrons. So in the first shell, it can hold two electrons, so that shell is full. In the second shell, we can hold eight electrons, so magnesium's second shell will be full. In the third shell, we can hold 18 electrons, but magnesium, well, it only needs two. So it has two electrons in its outer shell. Its electron configuration would be 2, 8, 2. Magnesium, being a metal, it wants to lose two electrons to have a full octet. So what will happen is magnesium will lose those two electrons and it will lose its whole outer shell. Its outer shell electrons will disappear. That now means that it has eight electrons in its new outer shell. Its formula is Mg2+, and its electron configuration would be 2,8. It's two positive charge because it's lost two electrons. Phosphorus with 15 protons, it will have three shells as well. Going through and putting in my electrons, I would have two electrons in the first shell, I would have eight electrons in the second shell, which is full, and then I would have five electrons in the outer shell. So phosphorus has three places where an electron could go. And what it will do is it will gain three electrons to fill its outer shell. Its outer shell will then have an octet, have eight electrons. In this state, the phosphide ion is stable, and has the formula P3 minus. Its electron configuration is now 288. So we need to be able to use the periodic table to predict the charges and then the symbols for both cations, the metals, and anions. Remember that metals are, lose electrons and are called cations. So I'm going to do a couple for us here. So sodium is in group 1. Its electron configuration is 2, 8, 1. It will want to lose one electron to form a plus 1 charged ion. And its name, because it's a metal, won't change. It will just be called a sodium ion and have the symbol Na+. If I have a look at aluminium, aluminium is in group 13. It has the electron configuration 2, 8, 3. It wants to lose three electrons to become plus three charged, and its name would be an aluminium ion. What I would like you to do now is to go through and fill out the rest of that table. Pause the video now, fill out the table, and then show me that you filled that in in class, and we'll move on to the anions. So the anions, remember anions are non-metals, they want to gain an electron, and when a non-metal gains an electron, it is called an anion. When we have a non-metal, we change the last part of the name to ide. So carbon, which is in group 14, 
has the electron configuration 2, 4. It wants to gain 4 electrons, so it's got a 4 minus charge, and we change the last name to Ide. Carbide. Oxygen is in group 16 of the periodic table. It has an electron configuration of 2, 6. That means that it wants to gain two electrons to have a full outer shell, which has a charge of two minus. Its name would be oxide. Change the last part of the name to ide. Its symbol, O2 minus. Fluorine, which is in group 17 of the periodic table, will have an electron configuration of two comma seven. It wants to gain one electron to have a full outer shell of eight, which means that its charge is one minus, and its name will change from fluorine to fluoride, changing the last part of the name to ide, and its symbol will be F minus. Can you go through and pause the video and do the rest for me, please? Okay, last thing. When a metal and a non-metal come into contact, there's a chemical reaction between the two. The metal loses an electron to form a cation, and the non-metal gains an electron to form an anion. This is called an ionic compound, and an ionic compound is when we have a metal bonded to a non-metal. So if I have sodium and I put in its electrons, we know that sodium has one electron in the outer shell. Now that will happily react with chlorine. Chlorine has seven electrons in the outer shell. So sodium wants to lose one electron and chlorine wants to gain one electron. So they're a perfect pair. So if I highlight in the sodium, this one electron in the outer shell, it will move towards the chlorine because chlorine has one extra spot for an electron it wants to gain. So we say that there is an electron transfer between sodium and chlorine. Sodium loses its electron and chlorine gains the electron. So what we form is an ionic compound with a sodium ion and a chloride ion. Now the way we draw this is we show this using the electron configurations. The sodium will have lost an electron so it's become positively charged which is why I've put the square brackets with the positive and it's lost its outer shell of electrons, so now it only has 10 electrons, but is positively charged. The chlorine, I can do the same thing, and I apologize for my uh, writing getting a bit squishy here, but chlorine will now have a full outer shell of electrons, and it will be negatively charged because it's gained an extra electron. So it will have a full outer shell. So the sodium is happy because it's got a full outer shell of eight, and now the chlorine is happy because it's got a full outer shell of eight. They will be connected to each other because of the attraction between the positive and the negative charge. They will stick together very, very strongly. Thanks for watching Year 10s. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.